Welcome. You are listening to Sanctuary's Coffee and Conversation, a virtual interview space. My name is Myrna Haskell. I'm co-founder of Sanctuary Magazine, an online publication for women that empowers and inspires with a focus on women in the arts, women business leaders and humanitarians who make a difference in their local and global communities, women's health and wellness, and a variety of articles and inspirational travel, career journeys, and finance. You can find us at sanctuary-magazine.com. Today, I have Dr. Marissa Moeller joining us. She is the owner of the Alternative Therapist Partnership. For decades, she's been providing services in traditional psychotherapy, as well as holistic alternative therapies to clients in the Hudson Valley region of New York, as well as Brooklyn, New York. And more recently, Marissa has been providing virtual services to clients. Welcome, Marissa. I'm excited to have you today. Hi, Marna. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. And I've come prepared with my coffee. Keeps me going in the morning. <laughs> so um, I'm excited for you to share your expertise. I wanted to ask you first about the fact that you have told me previously that you've been receiving a wealth of calls from people lately. And of course, we're experiencing this health pandemic right now. People are, you know, upset about the social isolation. They're not able to visit with elderly loved ones. You might see large families who are stuck under the same roof with parents who weren't used to maybe educating their children from home. The situation with the newness of working from home or people who aren't employed, there's all kinds of things going on that have caused anxiety. So. I was wondering from you what you've seen with people who have been calling you and asking for help with some, what some of the major issues are that people are dealing with. Well, personally, the people who have been calling me have been dealing with exorbitant amounts of stress. And that stress comes in different ways to different people. As you mentioned a little bit, isolation, that's a big issue, especially people who are living alone or feel cooped up in small surroundings, apartments where they have no backyard, can't get out. Um, of course, the economic issue, very hard for people right now, a single parent household suffering greatly. Uh, also, um, believe it or not, people missing life events, whatever that may be, whether it's a dance recital, graduation, wedding, these are important to people and that is putting a lot of stress on them as well. So uh, I would have to say it is definitely stress. Yes, and you know, I hadn't even thought of, you know, the, the uh, milestones that folks are, are missing. And now that you brought it up, my nephew, it wasn't a high school graduation, but he's missing all of his eighth grade end of the year um, events and eighth grade moving up day. And then of course there's the seniors and the college graduates who are missing out on those really important traditional ceremonies, you know. Um, there's such a variety of things that people are struggling with today. Do you, so you've opened up your heart and mind to folks and you've been um, offering these virtual services so that you can still continue to help people. But I'm wondering is with your industry in particular, do you foresee any permanent changes that are going to happen, perhaps therapists to continue with uh, virtual services, or maybe even they have to change uh, the logistics of their in-person services? What do you see as permanent, charge, um, permanent things that are going to happen as we move forward? Well, I can only speak for myself. I see that my clients are having um, a much easier time of talking virtually because from the safety of their own home, they can dial in more or less. They can use the phone. I do have, uh, of course, service that I use that's HIPAA approved. So they feel that they can use the virtual services that way. They feel a lot more comfortable. I have had primarily the elderly people express to me a little bit of concern to go back out now, which that also presents a problem, not wanting to leave the home. That's the other end of the spectrum with this virus situation. Yeah. A lot of them are fearful. Do they race out? No, they don't want to race out. So this to them is wonderful. They've asked me, many of them, if I'm going to continue with the virtual services. So I do have to see how to add that in because it does give them a little bit more freedom. 
Yeah, and I agree with you. Um, the elderly, perhaps people that have some sort of a physical disability where it makes it a lot more difficult for them to go to an office to seek these types of services. So even moving forward and say five, 10 years from now where this pandemic might be more in our distant memories, uh, virtual services will be really important, I think. So, so that's good. I'm glad that that's working out for your clients. I wanted to ask you a little bit about what a healthy response to change looks like. And if there's anything that you're telling your clients um, in terms of them moving forward as we're opening up in these different phases to have reasonable expectations, I guess I want to say. Well, I think that the the key phrase is start slowly. There's really no other way. Um, you cannot go back to racing in every direction because we really simply don't know where we go from here as far as our employment's concerned, as far as school. I'm not sure about all the states. Uh, if I'm correct, I heard 44 states decided not to open the school and schools until September. Oh, well, so that I hadn't heard with that. It, Yes, that brings with it a host of other issues. Um, people that work from home have a difficult time when other people are in the household to set a structure. Um, others are fearful when they leave the home. How do you leave small children unattended that have to right. go to school? Yeah. There are a lot of things that we have to actually take baby steps towards. That, that's all we can do. We have to move slowly, one thing at a time. Venturing to the supermarket is still a big issue for people. Um, I do have some clients, they finally went out, they went to facilities that had service outside where whatever it was that they were purchasing or doing, they were able to pay outside, stay outside, they were comfortable. Um, so there's gonna be more of that probably. Right, right. I don't right. know how, right. I don't know how comfortable they would have been walking in somewhere because okay. I think that there's going to be a lot of lines. And with that also comes a lot of frustration waiting online. Hot summer days, waiting your turn. Oh, absolutely. Um, People have a hard time anyway waiting I in know. line, right? <laughs> that's why my phone is constantly ringing. It's, uh, yeah, your phone's constantly. Well, I'm so glad you're there to help people. That's fabulous. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about the different therapies that you offer. And I was just wondering if there's specific therapies that you think in particular help with, say, situational anxiety or fear of the unknown? Well, I think that everybody should start the day with meditation. I myself do. 10 minutes if you can't Just do 10 more. minutes, 10 minutes first, 10 minutes. Morning. If you can't mm -hmm. do more, a little guided meditation that already sets the tone for the day. Okay. And of course we do have uh, life's issues that creep in and frustrations that creep in and we can only address them one at a time. Um, we just can't take everything on all at once. It's impossible. So the meditation allows you to set the tone, relax and get your mind ready for the day. Um, then with the unknown, we're all in the same questioning phase, I would say, because we do come from different backgrounds. So I wouldn't say we're all in this at the same level, but we all have similar questions. And so we have to go with one thing at a time. And I think the so many people are concerned with the economic issue right now, and that's what they're trying to focus on first. I think once they ease back into that, they'll start to be able to expand outward with everything else. First, they want to make sure that they can have a roof over their head and, and, uh, and food for themselves and their families. And right. Then you don't have those things, right? The and, basic right. necessities, right. Mm -hmm. Then if those aren't covered, you really can't do anything else. And actually, you have no time to stress over anything else if you're stressing over those things. That's right. That's right. Um, you mentioned the elderly before, um, and I didn't ask this specifically, so I'm just wondering, um, do you think that the elderly community, because so much um, focus has been on the fact that they're a very vulnerable part of our community, if we're going to see that they're asked to stay indoors and to stay separated from their families and loved ones to the point where you know, they start to experience depression. I'm not sure if any, any structured 
system is going to tell them to stay indoors, but I think that a lot of them may self-impose that yeah. on themselves, which is, um, it's scary. It's frightening. It's, it's, uh, it's a sad state of affairs. And I think that family members are going to have a hard time too dealing with that because there have been some elderly people making comments, a lot of things they don't understand. They're isolated yeah. and they're sitting home. They don't understand all the technology that's yes. being used that's and being spoken about. Mm -hmm. They're not taxing their mind as much. So they're becoming a little bit more um, frustrated with what they hear and maybe not comprehend. And I think that that further sets the tone to isolate themselves because they're fearful to go out. They're fearful, will they be sick? Will, will, will they be around people that are sick? Um, will, will things change so much that right. they don't recognize things? That's very frightening for them. Um, it's a, it's gonna be a hard task at hand to help the elderly. That's right, and you're probably gonna see an increase in clients from that particular demographic as well. Um, is there anything perhaps for listeners who don't know you yet that you would like to tell our audience um, that you feel is something special about the services that you provide, perhaps what your style is as a therapist? Well, I do traditional psychotherapy and I do use an eclectic mix of cognitive therapy uh, techniques. However, I find that most of my clients like coming to me because it's more like sitting and chatting. It's not a strict 50 minutes in and out. Oh, um, that would put or, stress on me if I thought I was on the clock. <laughs> right? More, more stress for people, right? Especially yeah. at a time like this. Um, sometimes uh, I find that they stay a, a lot longer than first expected, but sometimes I think that especially the initial step, they often need it. They haven't had anybody to talk to at all. I can actually see their body changing physically. They just relax um, when they're sitting in the chair or even now on the screen because so many are freed from the, their, from the fact that they can just talk to me through their screen at their home. They th this is like wonderful for them. Um, right, because they're in a comfortable space probably too, right? They're in their own environment. environment. Their yeah, I could see that. I could see but that. But yet an outside, but yet they have that reach outside. Those that understand the technology, I'm trying to, um, and it's just, it's not the elderly. It's, it's, it's anybody who doesn't understand the technology, trying to help them with that as well. Not to be so fearful of it. They're just terms. They're all terms, you know. It's, well, it you know, sounds like you really care about the people that you're helping, and that that's, makes my heart sing. So. Oh, thank you. Um, so how can listeners reach you, Marissa, if they're, they want some help? I think the best thing to do is to go to my website. It's mm -hmm. urecreate.com. That's the letter U, and then the word recreate, um, R-E-C-R-E-A-T-E.com. Uh, there I have a page, a screen that you can... Um, either get the phone number to call because we had set up because we have to go through the HIPAA approved system. So we set up appointments that way if you want virtual or the phone conversation, but there's also a form that they can fill out if they want to just start with that first. If they're a little leery and they want some more information, they can just send in a, a quick note that way too. Okay. So we respond. But Usually I respond within 24 hours. Oh, that's there's a response. great. That's great. So everybody who's listening, if you would like some expert advice from Dr. Marissa Muller, go ahead and visit urecreate.com and you can get all of the information from there. Well, Marissa, it's been truly a pre pleasure talking to you today and you're just a wealth of information for people. And I'm really, really happy to talk with you so that you can share your expertise with our listeners. Oh, so I Sure. So I want to thank everyone for being with us today. Again, you've been listening to Sanctuary's Coffee and Conversation. And if you can find Sanctuary Magazine at sanctuary-magazine.com. We would like to wish all of our listeners and our readers health, happiness, and inspiration. Take care, everyone.